Hey guys, Chris here. Today I'm in the Plumas National Forest of Northern California and I have a scary story for you about three hunters in Pennsylvania and they're confronted with something extremely frightening in the brush and one of them, one of the hunters, decides to go in and confront it. That's next. Okay, you guys, today's beer is the Dogfish Head 90 Minute Imperial IPA. There we go. And that is our refreshment for the day. Yeah, I am in the Plumas National Forest. The, uh, the weather has been really cold as of late, and uh, my camera does not work when it's really cold. My batteries, my flip out screen does not work very well. So it makes it really hard to do a shoot. But we are back and enjoying the outdoors today. It's about 41. So there we go. Cheers. So our story takes place in the Allegheny National Forest of Northwest Pennsylvania. 1994. This uh, national forest spreads out over a series of plateaus. Beautiful country. The Allegheny River flows through there. Some lakes, smaller streams. Great country for deer hunting and as well as all kind of things. I love the national forest. I'm in a national forest right now. Plumas National Forest. There was three hunters Steve, Mike, and Rick, and they spent the day, it was a Saturday, hunting, looking for deer sign, tracks, listening. Didn't have too much luck. They did see some deer up on a ridge. It was too far away to get a shot off. Hiking through the forest. Day's getting late. Sun's starting to go down, so they worked their way back to the truck. They had a crew cab, pickup truck. They figured the day was over. Didn't have any luck hunting. It was time to go. The sun was setting. They got back to the truck, got their gear in the truck. Steve was in the front seat driving. Mike was in the passenger seat and Rick was sitting in the back in the crew cab on the right side. They're driving down this dirt road. There's a little bit of snow on the ground. Come out of the forest and there's this big long meadow and there's a creek off to the right the, the meadow kind of slopes down to this creek and as they're heading down this the middle of this meadow they're coming to a forest you know back into the forest and this creek kind of winds back next to the road a lot of these forest service roads follow creeks and rivers that's how they're able to make a lot of these roads out here and in any national forest. And as they're driving, the sun's set. They still got some sky, but it's dark and it's getting darker in the forest as they're approaching this forest. And Steve sees it first. He's driving and off to his left, he sees what looks like a large person crawling on their belly. 
just off to the left of the road. And it's getting pretty dark, but there's snow on the ground. Not much, two, three inches. And because of the contrast, they can see that there's this shape moving across the snow and heading for the road. And it's huge, this huge shape. And at first they thought, is that a bear? It's just moving really oddly. It was moving like elbow, elbow, knee, knee, like a soldier in boot camp. Kind of dragging the body, being as low as possible, almost like it didn't want to be seen. It gets to the road and it clearly crosses the road in front of them. And Steve stops the truck, headlights are on it just for a moment, moves pretty swiftly and it gets to the right side of the road and it just goes off the road down this embankment towards the creek. The creek's maybe 20, 25 feet off the road and then there's a pretty steep embankment there. Steve stops the truck and they're all like, what in the world was that? Mike had seen it, Rick moved his head over, he saw it. And they decided to get out, get out of the vehicle, get out of the truck, and just kind of investigate. They get out of the truck, the headlights are still on, the truck is still running, and they're just looking at the, this kind of drag marks going across the road. And they're wondering, what do you guys think that was? It's really freaky to watch this thing moving across the road. And Rick thought it was possibly a person, maybe another hunter, kind of messing with them. And he didn't like that idea. Rick was apparently kind of a hothead. And he said, I'm going to go down there and see what's going on. And Mike and Steve were like, no, don't, don't go down there. That's not a good idea. He goes, no, 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 I'll just be back in a minute. And before they could try and convince him about anything, steps off the road and goes down this embankment. This embankment, basically a ditch, was steeper than he thought and deeper. He thought it was maybe six, eight feet and maybe, you know, he could just kind of walk down there and kind of confront whoever this was or whatever this was. He had a flashlight with him. He goes over this embankment and he slips on his back and he slides to the bottom of this slope. It's about 15 feet. Thick brush, it's near the creek, and if you've ever followed these creeks, or I fly fish a lot of these types of creeks, and they're really thick around them. A lot of growth, a lot of brush, and then trees, obviously. And Rick slides to the bottom of the slope on his back. He gets to the bottom and he drops a flashlight and he hears, when he's at the bottom, this kind of a growl huff, kind of a <clears throat> sound. And he frantically feels the ground for his flashlight, finds it, and it's dark in there now. And he aims it and he doesn't see anything, it's just brush. He doesn't see anything except brush. He takes a flashlight, shines it a little farther up and up, and he's startled because he sees what his mind is telling him is a man on horseback wearing a fur jacket. That's the first thing that his mind calculated because <laughs> he couldn't think of anything else. And he's looking at this, seeing this big furry shape with about two thirds of brush in front of it and then about a third of it was sticking up above that. It was about eight feet plus high. And he's just looking at it just for a moment and then whatever this thing was, you could see the shoulders and this kind of head, it was sideways and it turned like this and it was now looking straight down at him while he's sitting on the bottom of this small slope. He panics turns around, he slips again on his back, and then he's trying to get up this slope, and he's taking all of his effort with the flashlight still in his hand, and trying to go up this muddy, snowy slope with brush. And the flashlight's 
kind of shining in his face and it making things more confusing even. He's crawling up this slope as fast as he can and he hears behind him kind of this crunching and the breaking of the branches behind him. He was just terrified. He's thinking at any moment while he's trying to get back to the road that whatever this thing was is going to grab him by the ankles and pull him straight back down. And who knows what after that. He keeps clawing his way up with a flashlight in his hand, finally gets near the top and he can see the light from the headlights and he can hear Mike and Steve saying, what's going on? What's happening? And he gets his elbows up to the road and he goes, we got to go, we got to go. That's all he could say was, we got to go. And they both came on each side of him, helped him up and ran to the truck. They all got in the truck, closed the door, the headlights are still on, truck is running, they locked the door, and right when they locked the door, to the right, Steve and Mike could see, they're on the right side of the truck, they could see in the ditch, this silhouette coming up, again, the head and the shoulders and part of the chest of this Sasquatch coming up through the brush and the snow on the right side of the ditch. Came to about eye level with the truck, about five, maybe six feet high. So they were guessing this thing was about eight feet tall and it was probably two or three feet standing on the slope inside the ditch. Both Rick and Mike say, go, go, go. Steve steps on it and they're pulling away as fast as they can. This is a dirt road with snow on it and it's dark and they can't go too fast. And Steve can see in the rear view mirror just a silhouette of whatever this thing was walk behind them. It wasn't pursuing them, but it walked behind them on the road and went down in the ditch on the other side of the forest. Crazy. They're driving down the road. It's night. The headlights are on and they're all talking at the same time, trying to understand what they'd just seen. And they knew it wasn't a bear, a mountain lion, or even a person like Rick thought it potentially could be. They knew it had to be a Bigfoot or a Sasquatch or at least like a crazy large feral person. And they also agreed that however frightening this thing was, it was for sure going to change how they view their time in the Allegheny National Forest and their experience going forward being in the outdoors. And that is my story for today. <laughs> Pretty wild. Never go in the brush looking for a Sasquatch is the motto of that story. So I had to move around a little bit in the forest here to keep the camera and the light working for me. So I think, I think we pulled it off. But I really appreciate you guys watching my channel. I am going to be getting out a lot more now. The weather's kind of easing. It's not so frigid cold and affecting my camera and things like that. So I'm really looking forward to that. I got uh, some camping trips planned and going to get the trailer out really soon here as well. So looking forward to that. So I really appreciate you guys watching and we will see you on the next one. And as always, keep hiking.